Hi, everyone. I hope you've had a great week. Uh, I'm joined this morning by Jen Grand Lahano, who is with the Contra Costa County Tobacco Prevention Program and who has a very steeped background in public health and has been working on uh, tobacco ban and tobacco education for quite some time now. Thank you for being here, Jen. And yes, thank you. Also joined by Jay Lifson, our Executive Director of our Chamber of Commerce of Lafayette, who has been involved in the tobacco uh, uh, ban prevention uh, issue that we've been talking about on our council for several months now. Um, as many of you know, on Monday night, uh, the city council voted unanimously to direct the staff to develop an ordinance to ban flavored tobacco products in Lafayette, in addition to establishing a licensing program. Now, this has been a hot topic for many months now, um, and on Monday night, we finally did make a decision. About 100 days ago, I raised this uh, on the record uh, with the council, and we had a good discussion around it and with the staff. Uh, after seeing some, uh, some data and, and hearing some things in the community uh, that were very alarming to me, and these things to me represented what I considered a public health crisis for our kids. And the use of flavored tobacco products in our schools in Lafayette, when you look at the data, is quite alarming. And I felt that it was a responsibility of your elected officials and your mayor to do something about it and to get involved. And um, we did so by, by taking a methodical approach over the last 100 days or so, looking at both sides of the story and coming up, I think, with the best way forward. So the process from here on out leads to the first reading of an ordinance, which will happen on April 8th and we would encourage everybody to come to that hearing and to look at the ordinance and we will have a debate on the language of the ordinance and then we will move to a second ordinance and if we vote in favor of it, it will become law. There's a lot of details that will develop from here to there, but that's a, a bit how the process will work. So I thought today in the true Lafayette way, I would invite two guests that have two different opinions on both sides of the debate. One the view of the, the chamber, one the view of Jen in, in, the, in the county, and have them talk just a little bit about their positions and where they're coming from so the folks that weren't there Monday night or were able to watch on YouTube uh, could hear from them directly. So perhaps I could, I could turn it to Jen first and ask you to talk a little bit about where you're coming from and uh, spend as much time as you'd like to. And I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you. So. Where I'm coming from is the side of public health, so it's data and research that shows um, that policies like the one you're looking at work. And something that we tend to forget about with everything kind of going on in the world today, that tobacco is still the number one preventable cause of death in the country and in California. And um, even though the smoking rates have, have been trending down lately, um, with the rise of vaping and these flavored tobacco products, that has reversed with our youth. So um, the National Youth Tobacco Survey just uh, data came out showing that um, in 2018, the smoking rate for youth was 78% higher than the year before. So this is definitely a public health crisis, and it's no coincidence that it has been linked to the rise of vaping and these flavored tobacco products. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we know that four out of five youth who start smoking start with a flavored tobacco product. Um, they taste good. It has a low perception of harm. P kids don't think that there's anything wrong with it. It's just vapor when actually it's like an aerosol gas that has chemicals, especially nicotine, which is one of the most addictive substances. And so um, they get addicted, they start using these products, and then um, four times are four times more likely to start smoking a year later. And these are kids who never would have picked up a cigarette. You know, that. Um, Health Department and, and various other campaigns have done a great job to kind of, um, you know, get youth and, and adults away from smoking cigarettes. And now with these vaping products, they don't see them as cigarettes. They don't say that they're smoking. They don't even say that they're using right. e-cigarettes. They say that they're using Juul. They're Juuling, which is one of the new kind of hottest um, products that's out on the market and has really kind of taken over as an epidemic in our schools. Yeah. And so we know that policies like this to um, definitely regulate the sale of tobacco, which is the only legally product um, sold that when used as intended will kill you. Um, you know, we want to regulate those products and we want to get, um, at the very least, get products that we know are marketed to kids 
um, to be banned from our communities. Okay, great. Well, thank you for your leadership. You brought a dimension and a perspective to our community that I think we needed to hear. Um, and we needed the education on to inform our policy, at least the council's policy. And of course, our, our policy is driven by public input. And that public input is driven by education from experts such as yourself. And you've, you've dedicated a lot of time in our community. So I, I wanted to thank you for that. Oh, yes, so, no problem. I, I'm happy to provide technical assistance to, to you and other cities on this topic. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me turn it over to Jay and um, to represent the chamber. And, you know, I made a comment on Monday night that um, it's my personal view. I'm very much in favor of free enterprise and unregulated commerce. Um, that is something I believe in very strongly. Um, but what I don't believe in very strongly is commerce that enables uh, direct medical harm, especially uh, towards our children. And that is something that drove me to the decision that I made on Monday night and drove me to, to, to raise this as an issue about three months ago. Um, but I did want to understand what our business community thought about this potential policy. Uh, I went around and spent a lot of time with, uh, with many that, that sell these products one-on-one uh, -on, -one on the weekends and talked to them, invited them to come to the hearing. And uh, like I said, in the True Lafayette way, I think we did have good public discourse on Monday night where we heard both sides. And I'm really, really proud of our community for doing that. This decision will impact livelihoods. And we don't take that lightly. And that's why we're going through this process so rigorously. And uh, Jay represents a fantastic organization that we've been partners with for many, many years. And I wanted to give Jay an opportunity to talk a little bit about the position of the chamber and anything else you'd like to talk Thanks, about. Thanks, Cam. So uh, our board of uh, directors, has, too, has been spending a lot of time uh, working on this, on this particular subject. Very thoughtful discussion um, at our last two board meetings. And um, in the end, uh, we came up with sort of a, a split decision. Mm -hmm. And that was, um, and I'll explain that, we um, absolutely um, will support um, uh, any policies, um, ordinances uh, that will control um, who gets products like that in our community. However, um, in the end, our board uh, it was almost split down the middle, but had a real hard time with banning products that are legal for adults to use um, and are being sold, um, uh, hopefully, responsibly. Um, so when we, when we talk about um, this health issue, there's nothing I can say or add uh, that would be any different than what the two of you have already, have already said. And I don't think there was anybody on our board that felt any differently. This is a huge health risk. Um, and, it, and it is at an epidemic level in our schools. And um, we work very closely with the schools, too. Yeah, you do. Um, so there's, um, there's, there's an understanding that, um, uh, that uh, as you mentioned, you know, vaping has nicotine in it. And even though it doesn't have tar in it, which is one of the ways that they are promoting this product, mm -hmm. which is tar is what causes the cancer along with some of the other chemicals, nicotine is addictive and it still creates a real health risk and it also leads to um, uh, smoking. So we are absolutely behind an ordinance that would prohibit um, uh, any of the, I think, 13 businesses that we have in town from selling to minors. And we feel that um, that ordinance should be uh, uh, done in such a way that you can really punish the businesses if they don't abide by that. Sure. But when it comes to, as you said, there is a free enterprise and um, uh, tobacco products um, are legal to sell to adults. And uh, I think in the end, our board just didn't feel like that was really a fair and equitable thing to do to stop the businesses who do sell those products from selling them to adults. So that's sort of where we stand. Okay, yeah. thank you, and that's very fair. And again, Jay stood up unannounced on Monday night and, <laughs> and gave a great presentation and represented the views of the chamber and, and the chamber's quite large here in a, in a healthy organization. So thank you very much. Um, you know, I took a walk, I, I posted on Facebook last night, I took a quick walk through Burton Valley Elementary School on a, on a cool, crisp, beautiful Lafayette evening and reminisced about my kids going to that school and, and thought about this, this ordinance and, and ban and thought even more about the importance of it. And, 
And it is all about the kids, and it is all about supporting the well-being of our children, and, and which will drive the future of Lafayette and, of course, of, of society. So, you know, at the end of the day, we'll, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to move forward. We voted unanimously. There's great support behind it, and I would like to specifically call out Councilmember Candell, who has been a leading force behind um, this ordinance and this, this space, and she's done a fantastic job. And I wanted to, to say again, I did on Monday night, but I wanted to say again on the record and on, on camera that Susan's done just a fantastic job. So thank you both. One thing I would like to do to just to wrap up, uh, and speaking of kids, is next Wednesday night at the Jennifer Russell Building at the Community Center, the City Council and the School Board will hold its first joint, uh, joint meeting. And this meeting is intended to be a meeting to collaborate on specific issues, it's a bit outside of our strategic objective of city schools collaboration. Uh, we've done this before, we did it once last year. We're gonna talk about our strategic goals and we're gonna talk about development and school enrollment and so forth. But we're also gonna break and we're gonna have a social. And we're gonna have some refreshments served and it's really an opportunity for the community to come down and informally meet their school board members and meet their council members. And have an opportunity in that beautiful community center uh, to talk not only based just on a three-minute guideline, but to really ask questions that they want to and develop relationships, I think, with uh, their elected officials, which I think they, they are, are very ultimately do. So I would encourage everybody who's, who's watching this to, to see that. Um, Jeff and our staff, they've done a great job in getting the word out and we'll continue to, to advertise that. So I'm looking forward to Wednesday night. So with that, I would like to just thank both of you again for, yeah, for coming. Thank, thank you, Jen and, and Thanks, Jay. Jim. Thank you very much. And for everybody, have a safe weekend, and hopefully we'll see you on Wednesday night. Thank you, everybody.